Hey guys, thought I'd just do a little fiddly bets episode here and show you, especially PSG Flyer, that it does snow in Georgia once in a while. Nothing compared to what he's dealing with in Alaska, but there is snow on the ground. This will probably be gone tomorrow, but it looks nice. So it's finally winter here in the great state of Georgia. We're supposed to get freezing temperatures tonight, so that'll probably be about the first day we've actually had freezing temperatures. And it's, what, January 16th? So that's even a little bit late for us. Got a lot going on here, and but I wanted to get something out, you know, because I like to do at least a video a week. And I wasn't going to get done with a project that I had that I thought I was going to get done with, so I thought I'd just do a little fiddly bits here been needing to do this for a little while actually I don't think I've done one in about a month and a half uh, because I got some stickers that came in that uh, came in a couple weeks ago and I've been remiss in in um, showing them and uh, it's a really cool channel I also have an announcement about something that's in this box and uh, I got a little bit of update on the lathe and uh, whatever else turns up so stick around it will be a short one and uh, let's get right to it all right, okay, we'll get that out of the way. We'll talk about that in the next video or so. First thing I want to talk about is I had a sticker come in, and it is from Foxburg Spavrocoblin. Let me get it out of here. I also got a Cheerios box. And uh, if you haven't seen Foxburg Spavrocoblin, Spavrocoblin, that, that comes from uh, somebody whose name is not mentioned anymore on on uh, YouTube. If you've been around YouTube for for a while, you'll, you'll know who I'm talking about. Foxburg's Fabric Hoblin. Uh, it's got a big Cincinnati mill and uh, just got in a really cool, uh, I thought it was a bandsaw when I first saw it, but it's not a bandsaw. It's it's an actual powered hacksaw that's it's quite a quite a contraption and um, does a really good job actually. He uh, showed a little video of it working, but he's got a lot of big machines you, if you haven't checked him out, I'm sure a lot of you have already know who he is. If you haven't checked him out, you need to check him out. He's an up-and-coming channel, and uh, he has some really good content. So check him out and uh, tell him that he sent you. Yeah, I might have to get up on the roof there soon and get that off of there. I don't know if that old shed roof can handle that extra weight. So the next thing I want to talk about is what's hidden in this box right here. And uh, as you may or may not know, or surmised, or may or may not care, uh, I got a 3D printer, a new 3D printer. Uh, I had the small one that was kindly given to me by the uh, good folks at Anbull, and uh, I got taken with it, and I wanted a full-size one, so I got a full-size one. I chose a Sovol, S-O-V-O-L, S-V-O-1, and I chose it both because I like the features and the price, but a big part of that was uh, Myford Boy. Anybody watching my channel has at least seen Myford Boy's videos and uh, he has a a Sovel SV01 that he has used for uh, I think a couple years now actually. He uses it to make you know random things but he also uses it to make forms for casting and that's something that I'm really interested in and um, want to get into and actually uh, the new Atlas needs a part that is going to be perfect for that I think. As part of that though, as you may or may not know, I, I made a lathe spindle stop for the Atlas to help me get the chuck off. I looked at the designs out there and you know a lot of them are pretty much the same and mine's not revolutionary or anything but I have made some improvements I think to the ex most of the existing designs. These are a couple of the ones that I've done. And this box is full of prototypes and misprints, etc., etc. My announcement here is that these are for sale. Now, I have already actually listed these on eBay just to gauge the reaction to them. I listed them on my in my eBay store and uh, as of Right now, uh, I listed them three or four days ago, and I've already sold seven of them. So my printer is now working hard. Um, I'm going to go into these in depth in another video. I'm going to do a little separate video on how to use them, what they're for, and what they can and can't do. But I just wanted to let you know that uh, these are available. Um, a couple of you have already expressed interest in them, 
and um, you know who you are. Uh, I've already told you that I'll send them to you. I'm also going to do some sort of special. Of course, these are only good for, for an Atlas 10-inch or a 12-inch lathe. And I do plan in the future to make, make them for different lathes. And if that is, if you have a lathe that uh, you might, you think that this might work on, please let me know and uh, we can talk about making one. If this is something you're interested in though, let me know and uh, I will give you a good deal on them. They are selling very well, better than I expected. The orange and the yellow are the most popular of course because they're sort of safety orange and safety yellow. Uh, so you know that it's in your machine. Uh, I like the gray and the black, but that's just me. I, I'll, I'll just remember that it's in the machine. That's that's up to you. I've also done a dial. This is a large dial for uh, an atlas. Came out really well, I think. Uh, this is one that if you may have seen Mr. Pete's videos video a couple years ago, uh, he did some some uh, some dials like this, and uh, this is one of those files. My file will be on Thingiverse once I get everything sorted out with it. Uh, so if you have a 3D printer you, and you have one of these lathes, you can print it yourself. Uh, a lot of time went into this. It's one of the things I've kind of been doing. Uh, it doesn't take time, a lot of time to print them, but it does take time to, to get the printer set up the way I want it so I can get the surface finish that I want and also uh, get the right amount of infill because just making them 100% infill is is not necessarily the best way to do it. What I want these to do is I want these to break long before uh, the gear, the the Zamac gears on on the Atlas will. So I think I've got a good combination of infill. I can test all I want, but until they're until they're out there in the world, I'm you know you're never going to know how they're going to react. Uh, the teeth are solid; they are a pretty solid item, but the whole thing is not 100%. They're sort of a uh, in um, in consumer testing right now, I guess you should say. Anyone who has bought one, I have told them, you know, let me know how it performs and I will make adjustments based on any uh, additional data. And as I said, I do plan to make ones for different machines. I also plan on making a few other items. And whatever anybody thinks about 3D printing, they do have a use. Very quick to prototype and very cheap to prototype. Even though there's all this, many hours of the printer's time but a couple hours of my time and I was made it very easy to test different combinations different materials different infills as you can see this is a uh, this is probably a 50% it's more than that in the in the uh, final version so anyway enough on that enough on 3d printing uh, it's gonna come up occasionally in my videos um, I really see the use for it it like I said quick prototypes and uh, testing ideas, testing shapes and features. I think it's going to be a really interesting. Uh, if you're interested in them, I will be having a, I will be doing a, another video, as I, I think I said, about uh, about these. And it's going to be basically a um, commercial or instruction video for them. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, but I think that there are a couple things that, um, if you've never used one before, uh, it might be good to know. Just a couple tricks to make them perform better. So the last thing I want to talk about is uh, I did get some metal down on the bench for the lathe, which is under here. I don't want to show too much because, uh, you know, that just gives away what's going on. This is a 60,000 stick, which I think is 22 gauge. I'm not sure. I haven't looked that up, but uh, I'll I'll put uh, what it actually is somewhere, you know, up on the screen. But and it wraps around the uh, the bench there. Pretty happy with it. Uh, I do need to go ahead and screw the rest of it down. And that is going to be the base of the bed, and then I will have a chip pan, chip pan on top of that. And the reason I did this is because I like having on my other machine here. You can see, sorry, I've got I got a job going on, on over here that's that is also a video coming up. But um, I like having the metal on the bottom. 
it's easy to clean. As far as the lathe goes, it's uh, a little farther along. I have also almost finished the gearbox on it. That's a video also coming up. So it is moving along. It's slowed down a little bit with the 3D printer projects, but uh, we'll speed back up here uh, now that I've got a product rolling. Got through that learning curve on the 3D printer. I, th I think uh, we'll, we'll get back full bore on the lathe. I guess I could show you this. This is the uh, almost finished part of the gearbox. It's came out well. So uh, we're getting close on that. I hope that's something interesting. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.